Mary B. Scott. Just for you guys. Party, party, party.
used to like to dress like this, and a little knot in his, uh, in his uh, t-shirt, and a little flower in his hair. So that's who I went in as. I went in in character, and they literally went, and they came in, and they went in for the next guy, and they couldn't stop laughing. It just went really well for me at the time. Um, and I guess the rest is history. Then I met these wonderful guys. They were all really weird. <laughs> But in their own wonderful way, man, they all were just really incredible artists. And that's, I think, that's what really kind of, that's what inspired me, is working with these guys. And one guy's missing, Tim Busfield, who's the, uh, who's the, the, the Poindexter. And uh, he was very instrumental, along with Bobby and, and Tony and these other guys. He was being open-minded, man. That was uh, a lot. Yeah. And I, I mean, for my experience, I went in uh, because, I mean, when you look at the nerds, there are a limited number of roles that I would be appropriate for. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't really have gone up against either of these two, for example. So they had me reading Anthony's part. And so that's what I thought I was reading for, it was Anthony's part, which was pretty cool. You know, I mean, it was two of the lead nerds, and it was one of them. And um, But it turned out that wasn't what they were reading me for. And so they then called up and said, well, they're interested in using you, but not for that role. And I did all of the arithmetic and I figured there was one role <laughs> that they could possibly want me for, and it was booger. <laughs> and I said, I will die before I do that. <laughs> and I said, you just free. And they said, oh, we'll go on in and you know, talk to them. And blah, blah, blah. I said, I'll talk to them. But I'm not going to be playing Booger. I'm not going to be poking <laughs> my nose and my, my, my finger in my nose. And so then I, uh, they made me an offer and I did it. <laughs> End of story. It cleared that up, didn't it? Yes, it did. But it was interesting about the, the, um, the rehearsal because what we would do is we would go in and we would read through the script. We read through the script and then we would go and sit around the pool and entertain ourselves and go out for dinner and things like that. I mean, that was what we did for two weeks. And every day we would go in and we would, you know, read scenes or we would meet with the writers individually and they would talk to us about who we were and what we wanted to do with our characters and so on. And it is absolutely what Brian said is right. I've never had an experience like it since. It's just and never happened. The thing is, you know, these guys are painting it like, you know, they plan to have a two-week rehearsal period. What they had was a, a cluster thing. And um, <laughs> they had two weeks to try to save the script. So, uh, you know, who better to save it than the nerds? Yes! <laughs> He was 12 years old. He turned 12 on the show, yeah. Yeah. And we had a birthday party in your, in your room. It was an amazing experience. It was like, you got to my... And don't ask what we gave him. <laughs> and we, he went, we weren't allowed to party in my room because Andrew's room is right next to my room. And his mom was like, please, no parties in your room. <laughs> that was an amazing experience. It was... Um, it was, uh, you know, I was basically that guy. I mean, I was that kid. Those are my real jeans. Those are my glasses. It's like I was just, I was. I was really, uh, real dude. I did, I really um, and I remember when I first came to, to Arizona. I didn't. I wasn't part of the the, um, the rehearsal period. But when I got there, you were in character, like. Like the whole time, 24 7. 24 yes. 7. You, oh, yeah. you dress, dressing the whole thing, and I was like, wow, this guy is, this guy is the real deal. He just went into it. I wasn't kidding. I was not kidding, no. <laughs> and, and so I was working, I knew I was working with a lot of very uh, talented and serious people, and, and I'm 12 years old, it's my first movie, and, and I, I just I just want to do a good job, so I was, I was inspired and, and, uh, by you guys. Yeah, I mean, when uh, the, 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 the hammer came down and, and I was hired for this thing. I knew that I would be unable to become Louis Skolnick while living in Los Angeles. So I prevailed upon 20th Century Fox to send me a location early so that I could develop the character. <laughs> what I did was, uh, in the motion picture, the nerds are building a robot, and I thought, well, I'm a remote control model airplane pilot. I'll build a remote control model airplane while I'm preparing the role. 
So I went to Tucson, Arizona, and I only brought with me my wardrobe and this model airplane kit. <laughs> and I couldn't leave my hotel room because I was too embarrassed to be seen as it was. So I'm in there for about three or four days. I'm working on this model airplane, and I get to the point where I need to have a motor mount built for the airplane. And I can't do this in my hotel room. So I call up the University of Arizona. I ask for the metal shop. I get a guy on the phone. He says, uh, yeah, this is Bob, metal shop instructor. I said, Bob, Robert Carradine, I'm in town. He says, I know why you're in town. What do you need? I said, well, I need an airplane mount for the motor on my airplane. He said, come on over. I said, OK. So I got dressed, and I looked in the mirror, and there's Lewis. And I went, oh, my god. <laughs> So I took a deep breath and I stepped outside of the Hilton Hotel room in Tucson, Arizona, and nobody reacted. I thought, wow, that's weird. So I just, you know, motored over to the U of A. I found the metal shop. The door opens up, and there's Bob, the metal shop instructor, and I was looking in the mirror. <laughs> he had a bird pack. He had pants up too high. He was wearing the hush puppies. I was like, oh. <laughs> struck a nerve. So he built me this beautiful motor mount. He even gold anodized it. And now it's about a week out and Tony Edwards shows up who was working on some other epic. And I take Tony and we go to Rush Week at the University of Arizona. Now for those of you that have never been to college, Rush Week is when you attempt to join a fraternity. And we went to fraternity roll and were dressed as the nerds. And everybody knew in town that we were there except for one frat house president named Biff. I swear to God. <laughs> His name was Biff. So the guy takes us into the inner sanctum, just like in the movie. And Biff is back there. He's got the pit helmet on. The two beers are up there. The hoses are coming down. He's booking, man. And the guy says, Biff, Biff, these guys want to rush. And Biff goes, no way, man. And he just keeps going. <laughs> I said, I think we got it. <laughs> That's all true. Well, my story was I went into casting and uh, they said, yeah, that's really good. Just, just do exactly that. Just just be yourself. And I'm like, be myself. I'm not a cheerleader. I'm not a sorority bitch. And I've not ever, ever dated a jock. But so I go to the callback. I meet Jeff New, who is about the dearest, sexy <laughs> guy that I've ever met and I don't even know he just took me through something he just was so relaxing to be around so um, I get on the set and you know I've always been one with nerds <laughs> so when I get to the set I didn't really know Ted McGinley absolutely gorgeous and everything else but right away I fell in love with the nerds I followed them around when I wasn't in their scene I hung in the background watching them rehearse which was so much fun I mean it just this is the best cast. We had so much fun. Yeah. Well, you know, we're still doing it. Now we're doing it here. Yeah. <laughs> this is a rare one. Yeah. This yeah. is great to see each other. Is so cool. Well, I it was a, evidently a call out for Asian actors. <laughs> I didn't get the call. And they were seeing 20th Century Fox was seeing all these Asian actors. I think I was out of town doing some other project. And so, and I was boning up on my Yiddish anyway. <laughs> and so, so that was furthest from my mind. Well, they were looking for an Asian actor, and and there was this actress. Her name was Rosalind Chow, and she played the wife of uh, Jamie Farr, who played Sergeant Klinger or Colonel Klinger, Klinger on, on Mash, and she was the wife on that. And they were looking and looking. And for some reason or another, you know, it just didn't work with these different actors. And she says, you got to meet Brian Tochi. And I had a TV series on the Fox lot, the first series, and she was in one of the episodes. And now she had her own series, you know, on the Fox lot. She says, you just got to see Brian Tochi. And so she gave me a call and said, I told so-and-so to give me a call, and so they're going to call you in. So I had to learn Japanese, how to speak <laughs> at least a little bit of an accent, you know? And so anyway, I... I it got me the script, and I looked at that, and I said, oh, well, I can do that. <laughs> and so I went in, and I borrowed my dad's glasses, put the, you know, the tape on the glasses, and everything you thought a nerd would be came in, and it was just one of those things where we all just kind of bonded and, ta-da, I got it. <laughs> and I have to say something really interesting about the group 